Good morning, Zio here, and it is Sunday, which means we're doing our Sunday gaming roundup where we go ahead, take a look back at everything that we talked about this week, add to it, you know, make make other things, talk about it, update things that are needing updates, that sort of thing. So um, I guess with all that, let's get into it, shall we? And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you should go ahead and do so now. Smash that like button. Do all that good, fun stuff that we're supposed to do um, just because I said so. Why not? Anyway, so this week we talked quite a bit. Uh, there was also a day that we didn't do anything because I was just dead to the world. I apologize. In fact, uh, this morning I woke up with a massive migraine because, of course, I did. On my one day off, I won't, wouldn't be able to sleep in because... Apparently, I decided I was just going to die. So, aside from all of that, we started our week off re-examining the Atari VCS uh, system. Uh, you know, my opinion on it largely has not changed, to be totally honest. There is some new information on it that um, I do want to go over. There was a press release of some kind, I think, uh, announcing a partnership and some other stuff that I haven't had a chance to look into, but will later today. Um, especially since I'm finally off, <laughs> but um, we'll talk about that more in depth next week, I believe. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll do an update video on the Atari VCS to sort of, you know, take a look at the updates, that sort of thing, and um, correct some information, or not correct, but update some additional information as well as I did reach out to some groups they got with me sometime, I think around Thursday is when they actually messaged me back and and gave me some information and told me some things um, So yeah, you know, I'll go ahead and I will update all with that with a dedicated video so we can just go ahead and uh, keep that going I guess um, you know, but You know my, my opinions on it really really hadn't changed much at all if this is something that you want though Don't think that I'm trying to prevent you from getting it. I'm just trying to inform the masses of what it is that they're actually getting so they don't think that they're getting something that is not what um, you know what it is essentially they're expecting one thing and then they get something completely different so yes I will criticize it just like some of my other favorite things out there like Blizzard and World of Warcraft and stuff like that I heavily criticize them because I love them so much you know and uh, it's just something that people should be aware of right so uh, with that, we then moved over to The Last of Us Part Two and Sony. Uh, we talked about how, you know, there was all this stuff going on not that long ago, right? With The Last of Us Two and, and a lot of us out here, we talked about how, you know, the reviews seemed paid for. Uh, you know, there were shills, all that good stuff, you know, bought and paid for kind of thing. And then, of course, because nobody really understands how things work or whatever or to I guess cover it up and stuff like that You know, they were like well technically nothing was actually bought and paid for You know and all this other stuff because no money was exchanged and you know there it's a deeper issue You know than just here's you know two thousand dollars. Give us a good review. You know something like that um you know, it, it, it's all about how companies expect there to be a good review, right? And if you give them a good review, they will send you more stuff, more free, free stuff, you know, more uh, review copies, swag and other things because you've praised their game instead of companies getting a review done on them and them actually having a review that's critically done on the game and then taking a look at it and go well okay so here's the things that the this person you know or this reviewer didn't like how can we fix that or is there something to actually fix here or you know is, is this legitimate criticism or somebody just saying it sucks for the sake of it sucks you know that sort of thing and actually looking critically at these reviews and some reviewers out there did do you know do a critical review of the game or as much of a critical review as one I guess could say because you know you've got part of the group over here trying to pander to certain groups and you've got another set of people who don't pander to them 
and, and do the complete opposite regardless of whether or not it's okay. And then you've got a few people in the middle who are like, well, I mean, it's okay. Here's where it did good, but here's where I think it fell flat and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, long explanations aside, <laughs> we do have this um, uh, um, autograph, <laughs> this um, article uh, from Polygon, right? Uh, where they talked about how somebody from Sony had reached out to, you know, a particular review and said, hey, could you go back and take another look? I think you may have, I don't know, did something wrong, you know, that sort of thing. You you, you didn't really give it a fair shake in our opinion, you know, regardless of whether or not you, you know, it was a fair shake or not, and, and how, you know, Sony tried to reach out to get them to do that sort of thing, right? Um, yeah, it, it's not right off bought and paid for or anything, but it is kind of scummy when a large company like Sony comes out and says, hey, look, here's this thing, right? We've, we've done. You gave it a negative. You, you weren't, it wasn't a very stellar review. However, we need you to go back and relook at it. Okay. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, you know, that sort of mentality that, um, you know, it didn't exactly help to dismiss the claims of bought and paid for reviews. In fact, it helped reinforce those claims, those, you know, I guess you can say conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Um, of course, we also talked about other kinds of things like how things are reviewed, you know, on, on the PlayStation Store and stuff, even when the game's not even out and they have a review score, which I think should be nullified. Um, and then we went into Metacritic where they have changed their way of doing games and, um, are doing reviews as well on the user side and how I think both the user and the critic score should probably be held off on for a few weeks anyway, um, you know, together and then came, come out together after the game has launched and people have a chance to play the game and stuff like that. Um, because quite frankly, there have been many times in the past where we have seen reviewers review things and um, they don't exactly play the game. I can't remember which one it was, uh, which I thought was a hilarious thing that, that somebody did, but I think it was an MMO kind of style game. Can't remember the specifics, but essentially a review came out and the reviewer bashed the game tremendously and said how much crap it was. And the company themselves reached out and was like, hey, um, you think you could do us a favor and I don't know, actually play the game before you review it, you know, and I'm paraphrasing because it's been a long time since I saw that article and I can't remember where it is. And they're like, oh, we did play the game, of course. And then the company goes ahead, takes screenshots of, of uh, you know, what their, how many hours and stuff they put out and replies with it and goes, well, according to this, you played a total of one hour, 53 minutes were, or something like that. And like 53 minutes of that was in character creation. Oh, well, I played on another account. Well, over here, it only logged 30 minutes, y you know? And I thought that was just terribly funny <laughs> when somebody actually had done that because, um, you know, when you've got something that is a legit, you know, uh, thing and you got proof to back it up, that's one thing to come back, clap back and go, hey, you know, you think you could actually play the game before you review it? Um, but something like this, it, it, it kind of, I guess, sounds hypocritical to actually say that this should be a no-no versus that being okay. But I mean, if you can prove that, say, you know, the reviewer didn't play it, then yeah, actually that would be okay to do. And I wouldn't bash Sony for going out and saying, hey, you think you can, I don't know, reevaluate your review? If you could prove that maybe the reviewer played like 30 minutes or an hour and didn't properly play the game, then I can see that being a viable thing. Hmm. So if you haven't gotten your coffee, you should go ahead and get that now. Just saying. Then we talked about Valorant, because um, we hadn't talked about it since it came out pretty much, but Valorant got some, some premium skins. They were about 25 bucks a piece. And when you factor in all the upgrades and all this other stuff were, and every skin, of course, because there was like five, I think, uh, the value is around $300 in total that you would have to pay to do these from the ground up if you purely paid for them, uh, right? 
And I think 25 for a premium skin is honestly a bit too much. Uh, if I remember correctly, and this is definitely outdated information back in the day when Riot did premium skins um, for League of Legends, they were like 19 something, I believe, 18 something, I don't know. Uh, you would eventually, you would pretty much like spend 20 bucks, right? And Riot points to be able to attain these skins if you bought them straight up. And, and that. Honestly, it still feels really expensive to be paying 20 bucks for a skin at that point But I think that probably is the cutoff for me uh, Personally when it comes to paying for a skin if you're anything above $20 at that point for a premium skin um, Yeah, no uh, we're, we're talking about a digital asset that some people put in some uh, You know good time into making and animating and stuff, right? Uh, but you know the rate at these things and how much they sell and stuff like that i'm pretty sure you could probably make you now i don't know if you can or not but i would wager that even if you sold them at five or ten bucks you could easily make back the money used to make the thing from the time and labor and still make a profit off the skin especially since the skin will always be there for people to continue to pay for you know a year or two years down the road uh, that that's my my uh, belief on that I guess you can say so you know does it really have to be 25 bucks no uh, could it be more less absolutely it could would I pay more for it? no if I'm paying 25 30 bucks for a skin mm -mm. and of course you know you don't have to buy all the skins if there's one particular thing you like using you get the skin for that you know I may not have mentioned that beforehand um, but yeah and of course if you want to take a look at these all in depth just everything is in the description down below uh, links to the videos whether you're on BitChute or on the youtube side of things and then we talked about crucible uh crucible apparently is a game from amazon <laughs> and as i've been looking into crucible amazon has done quite a few things <laughs> right and amazon has bombed every single one of them as it would seem uh, you've had things come and go, release and then disappear, and Crucible is one of those things that came out and then it went straight back to beta. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Amazon, uh, I, I don't know what else to say on that, to be totally honest. But uh, yeah, it came out, went straight back to closed beta so they can work on it. They've got one good um, you know game mode that everybody seems to really really like they're going back to concentrate on doing that and balancing it and and working on that before they relaunch uh, the game and I can't remember but what in crucible the free to play I'm not sure maybe I can't remember right this second anyway um, you know so that's good they're going back they're they're not straight up just killing it uh, there were a few other games that they had in development at one point that did get canceled and as I was looking into them I was kind of thinking well, that's that kind of looks kind of cool, but it's been canceled since then so it doesn't really matter now <laughs> Does it? Uh, Friday we didn't do anything. Uh, I was dead to the world. I could not get around to doing any recording I wanted to talk about Twitter even though it wasn't technically, uh, you know nerd news related but i thought it was an interesting thing to talk about um but we never got to it i don't know if i'll do it next week it, it's been all you know several days at this point uh, i don't think it, it may not be all that i don't know anyway <laughs> saturday um I, I was joined by uh kill red 40 of colors of gaming if you haven't seen them you should go check them out links in the description down below of course uh, they're on BitChute mostly. Uh, you can also find them on the Twatters and Parlay and, and the YouTubes and everything. So all the links for everything will be down in the description down below as we talked about upcoming games. And um, unfortunately, the list was kind of small this week. There's only like six or so games coming out. Uh, but we had a good time, had a lot of fun doing this and have to do it again sometime. Uh, but yeah, if you want to take a look to see what's coming out, because we've got a... Uh, uh, Dying Light, um, expand Dying Light DLC, I, I guess you can say, Rogue Legacy 2, and a, mo a few other games coming out this uh, coming week um, that, that are kind of worth checking out. So uh, go check that out if you hadn't. 
And I guess with all that, um, we'll go ahead and we'll end it right here. So uh, see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.